Well, hello everybody, my name is Roger and welcome to my channel, Roger's Reads. So today I'm doing another book review of a book entitled um, A Noise Downstairs by Linwood Barclay. And uh, this is the first uh, Linwood Barclay novel that I've read, but I've, he I've heard a lot of good things about him. I actually saw this book on a list of uh, upcoming books and it sounded interesting, so I uh, requested it from my local library. So, the novel follows Paul Davis, a college professor who, one evening while driving home, notices a car swerving all over the road. Moreover, he recognizes the car as belonging to a co-worker and friend, Kenneth Hoffman. So, Paul was kind of worried about Kenneth and thought he might be, uh, be in some sort of trouble, so he ends up following him, hoping that uh, Kenneth would pull over, pull over eventually. Well, Kenneth does finally pull over in a deserted area, and uh, Paul does the same, uh, pulls, over, pulls over behind him. But as it turns out, Paul is the one who ends up needing help, because to Paul's horror, he quickly learns that the reason Kenneth pulled over was to dispose of the bodies of two young women that he had wrapped in plastic in the back of his car. So Kenneth apologizes to Paul right before he hits him across the head with a shovel. So fast forward several months later. As it turns out, a policeman arrived that night just before Kenneth was about to deliver a fatal shovel blow to, uh, to Paul and was arrested for the murder of the two women. So thus, Kenneth is in jail, and Paul, he did survive the head wound, but with some serious consequences. Uh, his mind is very forgetful, and he's plagued by nightmares, and frightening nightmares, as he tries to understand how his friend and colleague could be uh, capable of such heinous acts. So obviously suffering from PTSD, uh, Paul is currently being treated by a psychologist and together they're working on getting Paul's life back on track so that he can begin to move forward. In fact, Paul decides to confront his demons head on, but we can't help but wonder whether in doing so he's making the situation worse. Now, I found it interesting that a good part of the action in this novel alternates between the interconnecting stories of Paul and those of his psychologist, which help coalesce the various plot threads at the end of the book. However, things turn a lot worse for Paul when one day his wife Charlotte comes home with a vintage typewriter in Underwood uh, so that Paul could record all the traumatic events in his life in a cathartic way to, to help him heal and maybe even turn it into a book one day. So shortly thereafter, Paul wakes up in the middle of the night to the sound of the typewriter's keys tapping away as though somebody is uh, typing on it. But once he goes downstairs to investigate, there is nobody there. This happens again and again, and unfortunately his wife Char Charlotte uh, didn't hear a thing. Then things get even worse when the phantom typewriter actually began to produce messages reminiscent of those that the uh, murderer forced the two victims to type before he killed them. So as the story moves forward, Paul appears to be losing ground and he hangs on to the very edge of his sanity. In fact, both he and Charlotte believe that he is typing these letters or these notes himself on the typewriter, uh, but just doesn't recall doing it because he has had several lapses in his memory where, where people have said that he's done things but he had no recollection of doing so. So several questions remain. Has somebody been baking into his house at night? Are the typewriter noises a product of Paul's damaged mind, or is there something else going on here? Something perhaps even supernatural. So, uh, so now on to what I liked about the story. So first off, I loved how creepy this story was. You know, for many of us, the strange sounds that we hear once the lights are off or turned off are, are a source of uh, consternation. Hell, I've gotten the willies more than once as I lay in bed after hearing what I'm certain was somebody walking across the living room floor in my supposedly empty house. So Paul's experience with the mysterious typing in the middle of the night really hit a nerve for me with me. So that being said, it was such a fun story to read as we wondered whether Paul really was imagining things or whether there really was an intruder 
coming in at night to port torture Paul? And if so, why? So, I was about halfway through the book when I thought that I had it all figured out. And I was a little bit disappointed by that. You know, I hate when I figure out a mystery only halfway through it. But I ended up being wrong. And the author threw out some clever red herrings and amazing twists and turns that, that threw me off the scent of what was really going on. When I was certain that I knew what was going on, the author plopped down a twist that really put me in an altogether different direction. In fact, this book contains several mysteries which all come together in an explosive and surprising conclusion that had me on the edge of my seat. You know, I really like the fact that nothing is as it seems in this story, including the characters. Oh, and speaking of the characters, I loved all of them. A very complicated characters, I might add, whose true motivations don't become clear until way later on in the book. I felt the author did an exquisite job with the characterization in this novel and gave us an interconnected cast of believable, multi-layered, and complex characters, many of whom were a tad shifty, in my opinion, which deepened the mystery even further. So what I didn't like, you know, I didn't have any major niggles with this story, except for perhaps the ending. It was kind of fantastical and maybe just a tad, tad over the top, much like the ending of an, of an Italian opera. Um, but after I closed, so after I closed the last page, I said to myself, huh, not quite sure how I felt about the ending. But upon reflection, it was mostly satisfying and the book was masterfully plotted. There was also one character in the book whose only purpose, as far as I could gather, was to be a red herring. Uh, this, this person took up a good portion of the beginning of the book and uh, hell, we even had an entire chapter told from this person's uh, point of view. But then the character pretty much disappeared except for one scene toward the very ending. So there, this kind of struck me as a, a bit strange. So on to my final verdict. A Noise Downstairs is a well-written domestic psychological thriller featuring an enthralling, though somewhat bizarre plot with riveting characters. You know, from start to finish, the story held me in rapt attention and I'm really glad that I ended up uh, picking up this novel. You know, lately, I've been rather disappointed by the mysteries that I picked up uh, when I ended up figuring them out halfway through the book. So it was refreshing to read a story that kept me guessing until the jaw-dropping conclusion. I, actually, I stayed up about three hours past my bedtime because I needed to find out what was really going on. So I guess that's a testament to how gripping the story was. So all in all, the story was brilliantly paced well constructed and cleverly executed and I ended up loving it although now I have to sleep with the lights on. Anyway, I recommend this book. So uh, that is it for this time. As always, I thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all your support. Oh, and if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you give it the old uh, thumbs up. That really helps me out. And that's it for this time. Uh, I will talk to you in the next video. Roger and out.